Chapter 13 of the Song Celestial or Bhagavad Gita Translated by Sir Edwin Arnold This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 13 Arjuna said, Now would I hear, O gracious Keshava, of life which seems, and soul beyond which sees, and what it is we know, or think to know. Krishna said, Ye son of Kunti, for this flesh ye see is Chetra, is the field where life disports, and that which views and knows it is the soul, Chetra Jnana. In all fields, thou Indian prince, I am Chetra Jnana. I am what surveys. Only that knowledge knows which knows the known by the knower. What it is, that field of life, what qualities it hath, and whence it is, and why it changeth, and the faculty that wooteth it, the mightiness of this, and how it wooteth hear these things from me. The elements, the conscious life, the mind, the unseen vital force, the nine strange gates of the body, and the five domains of sense, desire, dislike, pleasure and pain, and thought deep woven, and persistency of being, these are all wrought on matter by the soul. Humbleness, truthfulness, and harmlessness, patience and honor, reverence for the wise, purity, constancy, control of self, contempt of sense delights, self-sacrifice, perception of the certitude of ill in birth, death, age, disease, suffering and sin, detachment, lightly holding unto home, children and wife, and all that bindeth men, an ever tranquil heart in fortune's good and fortune's evil, with a will set firm to worship me, me only, ceasing not, loving all solitudes, and shunning noise of foolish crowds, endeavours resolute to reach perception of the utmost soul and grace to understand what gain it were so to attain this is true wisdom prince and what is otherwise is ignorance now will i speak of knowledge best to know that truth which giveth man amrit to drink the truth of him the parabrahm the all the uncreated not asat not sat not form nor the unformed yet both and more whose hands are everywhere and everywhere planted his feet and everywhere his eyes beholding and his ears in every place hearing and all his faces everywhere enlightening and encompassing his worlds, glorified in the senses he hath given, yet beyond sense he is, sustaining all, yet dwells he unattached, of forms and modes master, yet neither form nor mode hath he, he is within all beings and without motionless yet still moving not discerned for subtlety of instant presence close to all to each yet measurelessly far not manifold and yet subsisting still in all which lives for ever to be known as the sustainer yet at the end of times he maketh all to end and recreates the light of lights he is 
in the heart of the dark shining eternally wisdom he is and wisdom's way and guide of all the wise planted in every heart so have i told of life's stuff and the moulding and the lore to comprehend whoso adoring me perceiveth this shall surely come to me know thou that nature and the spirit both have no beginning know that qualities and changes of them are by nature wrought that nature puts to work the acting frame but spirit doth inform it and so cause feeling of pain and pleasure spirit linked to moulded matter entereth into bond with qualities by nature framed and thus married to matter breeds the birth again in good or evil yonis yet is this yea in its bodily prison spirit pure spirit supreme surveying governing guarding possessing lord and master still purusha ultimate one soul with me whoso thus knows himself and knows his soul purusha working through the qualities with nature's modes the light hath come for him whatever flesh he bears never again shall he take on its load some few there be by meditation find the soul in self self-schooled and some by long philosophy and holy life reach thither some by works some never so attaining hear of light from other lips and seize and cleave to it worshipping yea and those to teaching true overpass death wherever indian prince life is of moving things or things unmoved plant or still seed no what is there hath grown by bond of matter and of spirit no he sees indeed who sees in all alike the living lordly soul the soul supreme imperishable amid the perishing for whoso thus beholds in every place in every form the same one living life doth no more wrongfulness unto himself but goes the highest road which brings to bliss seeing he sees indeed who sees that works on nature's wont for soul to practise by acting yet not the agent sees the mass of separate living things each of its kind issue from one and blend again to one then hath he brahma he attains o prince that ultimate high spirit uncreate unqualified even when it entereth flesh taketh no stain of acts worketh in naught like to the ethereal air pervading all which for sheer subtlety avoideth taint the subtle soul sits everywhere unstained like to the light of all piercing sun which is not changed by aught it shines upon the soul's light shineth pure in every place and they who by such are a wisdom see how matter and what deals with it divide and how the spirit and the flesh have strife those wise ones go the way which leads to life here endeth chapter thirteen of the bhagavad gita entitled chetra chan 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 here ends chapter thirteen of the bhagavad gita entitled chetra chetra gnya vibhaga yog or the book of religion by separation of matter and spirit end of chapter 13 recording by jyoti taravanath